I'm being recorded on the new GoPro Hero 8 Black. I got a chance to test it out a little bit before its launch, and it's basically better in every way than the Hero 7 Black. Now, instead of just talking about it, let me show you what it can do. might not seem like the design has changed much at all, and side by side with the Hero 7, it actually looks a bit bigger, but what GoPro did was finally get rid of the frame that's required to mount the camera. What you'll see instead is that GoPro actually built its mounting fingers into the bottom of the camera. This is great because I hate that frame, and I would occasionally forget it, and then I couldn't mount the camera. But also, it blocked the battery and microSD card slot, which is now on the side with a USB-C port, and the whole thing is still waterproof to 10 meters. Also upgraded from the Hero 7 is the Hyper Smooth Stabilization. It was so good on that camera, it basically killed the need for a gimbal. But with the Hero 8, HyperSmooth is available at all resolutions and frame rates, and it's adjustable in case you want it off, or you want to add a little bit of shake for realism, or add a boost for when you want no shake at all. You'll also find an updated version of Time Warp, the camera's motion time-lapse mode, that can now automatically adjust speed based on the scene, motion, and how much lighting you have. What's better is you can also now tap on the screen to drop back to real time, so you can stop and take in the scenery, and then tap again to speed it back up. Something new for GoPro users, but an option that'll be familiar to iPhone users, is Live Bursts. You can now, with the camera, capture a three second video clip and then transfer it over to GoPro's app, scrub through the 90 frames that you've created and pick out the one that looks best for a single photo. And while I'm here in the app, GoPro added a lot of editing features, including a horizon leveling option, which is awesome for anyone who's ever mounted their camera crooked. Now you can just go in and level it right out. Now back to the camera, GoPro said the question it gets the most is what are the best settings for shooting whatever activity you're shooting. So now instead of having to guess, there are a bunch of presets you can just dial up. You can create your own too, so favorite settings are just a tap away. And GoPro also added programmable shortcut buttons on the screen, so you can just long press on one of those and select something that you want stationed on the screen at all time to make a quick adjustment when you need it, cutting down on menu diving. One of those new shortcuts is for digital lenses, which lets you slide through four different views you're able to capture with GoPro single lens and sensor. You can pick from narrow, linear, wide, and super view and see in real time just how your subject will be framed up. So good audio is important too, and GoPro redesigned the mic on this new camera, putting it directly below the lens so when you're talking to the lens, you're talking to the mic. Uh, more importantly, it really helps eliminate wind noise. So if you're going head on uh, with this strapped to a bike or an electric scooter or whatever, going down the mountain, uh, you're gonna get a lot less wind noise now. If you want better audio than the built-in mic can deliver, there's going to be a media mod frame that you can add to the camera, and that adds a built-in shotgun mic and HDMI output and a 3.5 millimeter mic jack. There will also be an add-on light that fits into the frame's cold shoe, as well as a mod with a flip-up screen to make it more of a complete vlogging solution. Those are the big additions, but then you have a few smaller things like improved super photos and HDR photos that nearly eliminate motion blur. Live streaming can now be done at 1080p. Night lapse videos can be created in camera, and you can shoot raw for single burst and time lapse photos. 
So of course the ultimate question is, should you get it, should you upgrade? And uh, the answer is maybe. Um, if you're after the best camera GoPro's ever made, the most pocketable camera with the best image stabilization, this is the one to get. And again, it's still $400. But if you're just looking for something rugged and waterproof to supplement your smartphone shooting, you're probably better off getting the Hero 7 Black. It's still a really great camera and the image stabilization is also really good and you'll save some money. Um, but in the end, this is gonna be the best single lens camera you can get from GoPro.